this coon. Caught this coon in a live trap on our creek bottom back here last night. We like to use live traps because there's a lot of dogs in our area. Going to do a little skinning demonstration. One thing kind of interesting to note, and we've never trapped here before, this raccoon has two front feet. Don't, or I mean one front foot, sorry. Cannot clap. Don't know if he lost it in a trap or, or how he lost this uh, foot, but it's been gone a while. It's healed over. The animal's very healthy. Uh, probably has heightened dexterity in his left hand, but uh, he's made it along just fine. Right now I'm wringing the back ankles and um, this is the first step in skinning a raccoon. You want to go around the feet. Make sure your knife is really sharp. Try not to cut through the uh, the Achilles tendon on them. Now on the back of the raccoon's legs, I like to have an imaginary line that goes down the inside of the leg right to the bottom edge of the anus on both legs. That's where you want your cuts to be. You wring the ankles, bring it right to the bottom edge of the anus. So that's what I'm going to do right here. Take my old skin and knife, get it started. Bring it right down to this point right there same thing over here and the further in you stay on the back legs the more fur you put on the back of your on your stretcher if you cut it further up it makes the back I mean you could lose an inch by cutting right down the middle of the back leg. So cutting on the inside will help make your pelt a little bit longer on the stretcher. Now all I'm doing here is peeling the legs down. Raccoons are really tough little critters. Scientists used to think they were related to the grizzly bear but I think science has now proven that they're not. Although they do call them little grizzes for a reason. Now I'm just going around the anus. From this point, I like to go, I'm gonna cut this tissue along the side of the tail. And I wanna go in behind, uh, behind the tail, you can see a little light right there. Stick your finger through there and that puts you pretty much where you want to be for skinning the tail. Now this is the part that most people have trouble with. If you do an imaginary line down the center of the bottom of the tail just like this and cut out towards you, once you get to the tail you can you can see the, the uh, muscle and bone structure. There's a muscle that runs right down the middle of the back of the tail. That's what you want to follow when you're skinning out the tail. Gives you a nice straight line. Now, when skinning the tail, if you'll pay really close attention to the sides, that, that alone will keep you from breaking the tail off. The sides is where the break begins when they start to break. So each time I'm going to do a little cutting on each side, underneath, other side, give it a little yank. You can see how, it, how it's drawing down as I go. This is the proper method for skinning a tail. Now a lot of people use tail strippers and that's fine. Tail strippers are great. I got a little strength in my hand, so I don't usually use them. I just skin them out just like that. Once you've got it 
done. You want to follow your cut all the way down. Put the knife back in the spot where, the, where you cut down to. Push it gently all the way to the tip because you want that tail split all the way to the tip. Now this is critically important because if you leave the tail unsplit, fat will drip down and build up in there and all the fur will fall out of the tip of the tail eventually. All right, going to flip around to the front. This is a male. I'm going to leave the um, testicle sac attached to the animal. There is a penis bone in there that you sort of have to watch for. And I want to leave that attached to the animal as well. Now at this point, right here is the, the baculum or the penis bone. You're just going to cut through this, leave it on the, on the penis. Keep cutting. Don't cut through the belly muscle. Now, at this point, I'm pretty well ready to give this coon a yank. When I yank it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pull pretty much down to the front legs. It takes a little bit of strength. There I'm all the way to the front legs. Take and cut the saddle. That's what they call these, these muscular membranes, kind of like the, um, the brisket. It's, it's the saddle. And uh, on canines, when you're fleshing, you want to leave the saddle in place. Because that's going to add a little thickness to your pelt. Underneath here is where everybody has the most problem. If you'll simply just take your time. The skin is thinner here. You've got to, to go slowly. Make sure of your cuts. Do not cut the jugular veins, which are on each side of the esophagus right here. You do not want to sever those because you'll end up with a mess. Once you get it to this point, I like to stick my hand in here, pull it all the way down to the paw. We're going to do the same thing with this side. Pull it all the way to the paw. Zip it off. I've never seen a raccoon leg fur coat. They don't need the legs. They don't use them, as far as I know. Um, so it's fine to leave those on the carcass. Now, when doing the head, you want to pay attention to the tissue. As you pull down, it'll turn white. Where, where the skin connects to the head or to the uh, skull. So we're going to pull and cut at the same time. This raccoon was dispatched with a 22 long rifle. Um, I used uh, field corn and a little bit of uh, sardines. I laid um, leaves in the bottom and put some corn on it and put some sardine juice in the back and and he just couldn't resist it so those are pretty common lures for people when you're doing the head you notice how I went through the ears I cut them close to the body that's how you want your ears cut then you just continue to work your way along I like to stick my fingers in the ear of course, this one's not cut big enough to do it. And I'm going to continue to just cut this tissue. Now, when you reach the eyes on a raccoon, you'll notice the eye socket um, from the ear to the eye. I mean, you can just imagine where it's at. This little white line right here is the eyelids. I like to start at the back corner of the eyelid. I'm pulling at the same time that I'm cutting. I'm going to go over here and find them on this side. Pulling down. The eyelids are right in here. 
we want to try to get the eyelids. That's going to give you the size eye that you want. Now I got my finger in the side of the mouth. On this side, same thing. I'm going to cut through the side of the mouth. I'm going to stick my finger in here and I'm going to it, it, it helps you to kind of grasp and pull where you want to grasp and pull. Now for the fur market, you do not need the lower lip. I like to cut it off right here. There's no need for it. They cannot use it. We're going to keep cutting down the nose. Do a sawing motion. You see me doing this. If you just gently give it a sawing motion as you go, you will cut it. Uh, cleanly and it will peel down as you go both eyes are the same size because I got the eyelids they look that's one of the things that they look at when they're grading your fur a perfect pelt you should have the eye should be ideal the ear should be cut evenly the front legs should be cut evenly um, when we flesh it and put it on a stretcher we're going to cut an inspection window in the belly I'm also going to pleat the backs, the back on each side of the tail. They like the tail nailed wide and pleated up so it's a short tail. Uh, all of these things will help put dollars on your fur check. If you really pay attention when you're handling fur and you stay focused and you do a good job every time, there's no reason you can't get a top lot award from NAFA or get the best price at your local fur buyer. Um, anyway, that's pretty much how it's done. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. This is Ted Gustin.